no please listen so in the case of a rab rabbit is scientifically known as oritolagus cuniculus so this is the rabbit the european rabbit now we have to know the external morphology of this animal first now these are some of the important features of the rabbit one is it is a gregarious animal gregarious means living in social groups large large number of animals or members will be living together that is known by the name gregarious human beings are a social animal just like that so nocturnal another peculiar nocturnal means mainly active during night time another peculiarity is that they are exhibiting polygamous relationship that most of the time one male may be associated with two or more than two female members that kind of relationship among its male female members are known by the name polygamy polygamous relationship then parental care is there parental care means the mother or parents will be looking after their babies on every member of the animal kingdom we can be the species of the animal kingdom we cannot say that they are looking after their babies so parental care is not mainly present in, in some advanced animals only then you can see that the body is divided into three region head region trunk region this is the head region then this is the tongue trunk region and this is the tail region so these are the three main regions that we can find in the body of a rabbit then the body is uniformly covered with the hair you can find that in the air part of the body is covered with the hair then upper lip with a transverse cleft that is on this upper lip here you can see that this is the upper lip see there is a gap here or a cleft cleft means a gap an opening so on the upper lip we can find a gap in the middle that through that middle it can bring out it incisive it is only for mainly for feeding you ha might have observed that rabbit will be feeding on small grass or other uh, uh, plant matter mainly by uh, cutting with the, this this incisor teeth so in the case of rabbit their teeth will be this incisor teeth will be growing continuously also so that is another uh, feature of the rabbit then you can see that this are the pol as i told you a uh, what animal social animal these are different varieties of rabbit black is there white is there gray is there brown is there so different types of rabbits are here about which we have i think we have discussed in our earlier classes so the rabbit are mainly living in burrows these are the burrows made by a rabbit then you can also see that the size of a rabbit is about 40 cm in length from mouth to anus and the weight of a rabbit is usually 1 kg to 2 kg 2 kg then we can also see that it keeps the body temperature constant our body it has a slightly higher body temperature now our body temperature is around 37 degree see here it is 38.8 degree 39 degree that means a rabbit can survive heat better than if we human beings so the rabbit will sort out <coughs> so totally uh, at a higher higher environmental temperature the european wild rabbit also known as oritolagus cuniculus is a dusty brown see this is the color dusty brown but ventral side and lower part of the tail remains white that is this under side will be white so generally it is brownish or dusty dust means color of a dust or a soil dusty brown now coloration of domestic varieties or rabbit varies greatly yes get it sandone alle so in the case of so in the case of european rabbit we can see that there are different varieties color varieties are the pure white is the pure black is the white with brown is the and white with black patches are the 
Here you can find these different varieties of rabbit, black, white, brown, white with the black patches, etc. So these are the, the different varieties of the rabbit, but all wild rabbit are dusty brown. So this is the natural, only in domestic varieties, uh, or that is mainly because of this selective breeding by the breeders. They, because the white rabbit may have higher demand, so they breed such varieties more. That is why these rabbits are more common than uh, common in domesticated and uh, rabbit, whereas uh, wild rabbit are mostly uh, brownish in color. The body consists of head, tr neck, trunk, and tail. So there is a neck region, but neck is very small. Now, trunk is further divisible into thorax as well as abdomen. Here you can see that this is the trunk and we can find this is the thorax and this is the abdomen. So these, and here also you can find a small neck is also present. Now, another feature of the animal here you can find three types of rabbit, black rabbit, brown rabbit and white rabbit. So these are the different color varieties. Because of its cute nature, people are interested in domesticating this animal and, and keeping this animal as pet animals. See, this is the front teeth. These are the these two, three teeth. This is the incisor teeth. They grow continuously. That is, throughout the life of the animal, this incisor teeth can grow. So, uh, uh, the, but other teeth, other than incisor teeth, may not be having, uh, 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 may not have that capacity of continuous growth during the lifetime. Now, here you can see that the lower lip is continuous. On the upper lip, this teeth is exposed. So, this is known as the rabbit lips. So, and because of the that nature, this upper lip is exposed. Now, the head is large and produced into a large pointed blunt snout. Snout means actually the pointed portion of the mouth. This pointed portion of the mouth is known by the name snout. So, that is, it has a larger head. Then, snout has a terminal transverse slit like mouth. So, this is the front of the mouth. The slit, slit means a small gap or a small opening. So at the, at the front of the mouth, we can find a slit-like mouth, which is actually the division on the upper lip. And it is surrounded by two soft, fleshy, movable lips. These are the lips. So at the center of the upper lip, we are finding a gap. Now on either side, we can find the lips. Upper lip is divided in the middle into right and left half due to vertical cliff extending to the nose tip. So this lip, this gap is actually coming up to the nose or nose tip. That also you can see. Then, such a divided lip is known as hair, hair lip. It is known as the hair lip. Due to which upper front incisor teeth are exposed. Here also you can see that. So this is the hair lip and it is exposing the upper, um, upper incisor teeth. Then just above the mouth are two oblique slit like opening, the nostrils. This is, these are known as the nostrils. So these are the nostrils. Here you can see that. Then nostrils are surrounded by bare moist skin, the rhinarium and lead into nasal and olfactory chambers. So you can see that the, just before the nose tail, there is a small area here. This is the rhine area. This bare uh, hairless region is known as the rhine area. And, and that will be leading into nose, nasal cavity or into the uh, olfactory chambers. The region of bare skin is known by the name rhine area. Now, here also you can see, and this is a graphical diagrammatic image showing, showing the different region. You can see that upper lip, lower lip is here, upper lip is there, here, mouth is here, and these are small hair coming from the mouth region known by the name Vibrisia. So, here, this, this hair, these longer hairs are known as Vibrisia. 
So this is an uh, uh, idea exhibited in a diagrammatic form. The neck of the rabbit is shorter and flexible. So it has a very small, short neck. There is enough, see here you can see that the neck is not very large. See here also you can see it doesn't have a longer neck or a shorter neck is there. But the neck is highly movable. You can see the rabbit is moving its head in different direction very quickly. So that is because of highly movable neck. Then its short neck is advantageous in its burrowing in faster running habit. So those animals which are living in burrows like this usually have a shorter neck. For example, if you take a rat or a mice, the neck is very small because if it has a longer neck, moving through these kind of burrows may be risky. So it seems in order to help the faster movement inside the burrow, we are usually seeing that they are having a smaller neck or a shorter neck. So that is the advantage of shorter neck. Then you can also see that some other features of the, the short neck is the, then the neck is followed by large cylindrical front and which is divided into anterior thorax and posterior belly. So that, is, that also we have discussed earlier. Here you can see that uh, this is the, uh, here you can see the first part is the thorax and the lower, second part is known as the abdomen. Then next, uh, the thorax or the chest forms the bony cage having ribs at the sides and sternum. So if you look at the thorax, you can see that that is the this uh, this front part that is the thorax. This portion, the first part will be containing the ribs, and ribs will, inside the ribs, the heart, lungs, etc. will be situated. So that is the feature of the uh, thorax. And abdomen is without ribs and sternum. So we have the sternum here. Below sternum, there are no. Um, uh, so ribs, etc. Four or five mammary glands open on the outside at the or out, outside at the teeth. The teeth simply means the nipples in mammals. Uh, lower mammals are known as teeth. They may be more longer. That is why they are known as a teeth. So there are about five pairs of teeth in these. So that is the feature of it. Yeah, if you look at a dog also, you can find multiple pair of teeth will be there. So this is an idea regarding the skeletal system. The cage is shown here. Now the remaining, this is the portion of the abdomen. In the iso abdomen, there are no uh, bones are the mainly the skeletal system is, will be here. Now inside the cage, the heart will be present and as well as the lungs will be present. Then from the side of the upper neck, a thick tactile hair called Vibrisia or Viscates project outwards. Here I told you here, you see these are the Vibrisia, these are the Vibrisia, longer hair. This longer hair on the front of the mouth is known by the name Vibrisia. They are highly sensitive, sensitive to touch, tactile hairs are there. And those tactile heads are known as Vibrisia and they are helping to dictate the, move, uh, di uh, dictate the surrounding easily. If there is any kind of uh, vibration that can be very equally dictated. Then a pair of eyes are situated at the sides of the head each having a movable upper and lower eyelid with a very fine and shorter eyelashes. See, you can see that here you can, the eyelashes are very uh, small, small uh, eyelashes are present here. Larger eyes are here because this, this larger eyes may be able to sense, uh, collect more uh, light. So that this is a nocturnal animal. So that with a larger eye, it can collect more, uh, more light, uh, light in a, even in a diminished city, uh, light, city, uh, even in in a night situation. So that may be the reason why rabbit is having a comparatively larger eyes to collect maximum light. Then what is uh, remaining is that 
a pair of large movable trumpet shaped external ear or pinna e see you look at the ear here the ear ears are very long long or trumpet shaped here you can see that see ears are very long and the purpose of long ear is that to collect the maximum sound our ears are very small so we cannot hear sound to a, a higher extent but in the case of this kind of lower animals their survival depends on how quickly they are dictating the presence of an enemy like a tiger or a leopard or other kinds of predator so immediately they run away from the scene so <coughs> so that is why they are having a very good ear highly sensitive to ground vibration or other so other other type of sounds so that when an animal or a predator is uh, coming out they can easily detect them and escape in this, uh, escape for safety so that is the ear that is the purpose of longer ear both pinna remain upright when rabbit is on alert and laid back on frightening and running see when animal is on alert see it is now this animal is alert so in the here ear lobes are standing uh, stand in the standing position but if the animal is uh, uh, fear animal is in the fear then the ear lobes may be falling down that is the, uh, the even in dogs you can see that dogs may be uh, keeping the ear lobes uh, uh, erect when it is uh, listening to something very actively but on the other hand if it is frightened if it is frightened or running during that time ear lobes may be falling down then here also you can see that here the eyes are very large very large eyes with a small eyelid eyelids are few so that is another peculiarity of the rabbit now a pair of hairless depression is found on each side of the anus called perineal pouch the perineal glands here secrete strong odor uh, a characteristic of the rabbit so that is also a peculiarity of the rabbit so in the east, that is in the towards the anal region they are having a, 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 a very a small area of uh, without any hair this area is known as a perineal pouch on the around the anus so that area that area where this perineal pouch is located will be containing a lot of glands will be there and they produce a highly species specific odor or smell called pheromones and uh, and that is by which other species will be other members of the species will be able to detect the presence of each member so that is the purpose of perineal gland the urino genital opening is situated at the tip of the penis in male or urino genital aperture that is as in the case of most of the other animals the urino genital is opening through penis or in the case of female by means of vulva so these are the typical features of the rabbit also trunk bears two pendant pairs of pendadactyl pendadactyl means five five dactyls we have five fingers so two pair two pair forelimb as well as hind limb and forelimb are short and are held rigid to take the shock at the end of a leaf see here you can see that they have a shorter forelimb the hind limbs are comparatively more long in the picture also i will show you the one minute
Okay, so this is an idea regarding the uh, the features of the, uh, the for loops and high loops. Then next feature, each for loop has a proximal upper arm or brachial. If that is, if you take the for loop, there is a upper arm and there is a for arm. So upper arm and for arm. And the distal hand, this is the hand. Our the hand or manus with the wrist. This is um, uh, wrist, palm, meta. This is the wrist. This is the palm, um, and this is the metacarpals, and this is the uh, digits. So this is how. This way it is the the arrangement of uh, bones are present in the ease of this uh, rabbit. There will be four arm, uh, upper arm, four arm, wrist will be the hand will be there or manus will be there and metacarpal. The what we are seeing here are the metacarpals and what we are seeing here are the carpals. So metacarpals are there as well as carpals. So that is an idea regarding the skeletal arrangement of uh, the bones in the upper arm. And forelimbs are used for digging the burrow. And palm, this, in the use of human beings, our palm is free of hairs. But here you see the palm is hairy. So that is also another uh, uh, distinguishing feature in the case of a rabbit. Then here you can see that the animal may be able to stand or fall down to something. You see the nature of the ear, it is very, uh, it is in the standing position, that means a rabbit is very alert. So this is that <coughs> high limbs are longer and more powerful than four limbs. See in the, in the skeleton also you can see that this high limb is a comparatively more longer and is more stronger also. It is mainly supporting the animal on the ground. Then each high limb has a proximal thigh, a middle shank or a truss and a distal foot, just like in the case of ourselves. There is an upper upper area, the upper leg and lower leg. Then feet is the distal foot is the otherwise known as the and, and there is an angle is there, then the, what we are finding instead of carpals, they have metacarpals and tarsals. So this area where the feet comes are known as the metatarsals followed by tarsals. Hail is the first to toe is absent, that is another peculiarity. We have five fingers, but they have only five, uh, five digits or five uh, fingers on, the, uh, on their leg. So that is that is the the hallux or the first toe is absent. The hind limbs are mainly locomotory organs. The sole is also hairy. The purpose of hind limb is mainly for walking and running. So this is the purpose of hind limb. So most of the body weight is actually supported on the hind limb, and the uh, lower portion or the sole of the hind limb is also having hair or hairy. A short bushy tail is found at the hind end of the trunk. See here you can see there is small tail is there. A bushy tail at the posterior end. The lower surface of the tail has a white hairy patch uh, in wild rabbit which is used for warning signal to other rabbit when danger approaches. See, uh, read the sentence carefully. The lower surface of the tail it's a white hairy patch. See here, this is the lower surface. Now the, if you, the tail is like this, on this side, there is a white hairy patch. So when there is some kind of danger, animal will be keeping the hair, tail like this. And other members can see this white spot. That is an, it is a red signal, escape, that some danger is there. Just like uh, our traffic signal is giving red light, they will be lifting this tail in this way and showing this white mark. So other members of the rabbit will understand that there is some danger, immediately run away. So that is the purpose of this keeping this uh, white hairy patch on the lower surface of the tail. So it is a warning signal. So this kind of things are see here, it's a beautiful rabbit is here. This is a picture of a skeleton. Then, now we have to see the, about the structure and functions of uh, uh, this in, in the case of a rabbit. Uh, 